Hello Rejects, it's Greg here. It's John here. We're gonna talk about our top 10 most anticipated comic book movies from 2017 to 2020. This is all subjective. That's a lie. It's all objective. Yes, these, these are all are just, this is just facts. We checked them online. We checked them online. We did our research. We, we got a, a marketing team together, studied thousands of people. Lots and of comments. We came up with our top 10. So if you have like movies on here, that are not on our list, you're, you're just, just flat just out wrong. wrong. You're just wrong. That's the way it works. We haven't forgotten anything. This is not this an opinion. all mathematically. Not an opinion-based thing. It's all, it's all about just facts here we're dealing with. It's about us. We dictate, you know, the taste of society. And if you believe us, good. Because yeah. that, that's that is your fault. Does <laughs> so that mean you're on team right? <laughs> uh, that's all right. So for number ten, number ten, ten, we're putting on here what some of you guys might consider <laughs> your number one, and we'll go into why this is number ten. Avengers: Infinity War. I'll just put part one and two together. We don't have to do like part one, part two. Yeah. Avengers: Infinity War. I'm really looking forward to this film because I know the Marvel films have greatly been building up strictly to Infinity War. You know, like how phase one was building up to the first Avengers. Ever since Avengers, they've been building up to Infinity War. Constantly referencing the Infinity Stones, referencing Thanos every once in a while. Am I skeptical? Fuck yeah, I'm skeptical. <laughs> like, there's so many goddamn heroes. Like, how the... You watch an X-Men movie and you're like, there's too many people in here. <laughs> well, you can only imagine what it's like with Infinity War where you're like, oh, it's too many people. And maybe it'll be compact but i feel that like what fans are probably gonna go for is some killer action sequences yeah those awesome sweeping circling shots aerial shots of tracking shots <laughs> coverage lots coverage. of coverage of them kicking ass unit side by push. side <laughs> yeah look um, at them punching over there Look at them punching over there. Yeah. But John brought up some good points. Like, cause we were we were like really breaking down what we wanted on our list. Cause there's like a lot of comic book movies. Yeah. And, uh, so we only narrowed down to ten. But can, go into a little bit of why you were uh, why you've been a, you're a little hesitant about this. this yeah. Was, this is the one we had to fight about. To yeah. Be like, we had to, what should be on this list? This didn't originally make my list just because like this is a movie that to me I'm more interested in seeing just because I know that it's all been building to this. So I'm like you know because I've followed along this long I'm interested in checking it out. But of all the movies we looked at that are coming out, a lot of other stuff grabbed me more. Like I'm looking forward to more because the thing is we've done the Avengers view times. I had a great time watching the second Avengers movie, but when I think back on it, it's kind of a mess to me, and these movies keep getting bigger and bigger, and Marvel has a villain's problem, and none of the Thanos footage has really made me excited to see Thanos. It's not made me scared of him in any way. It could be anybody right now. I'm sure he'll get better as the character unfolds on screen, but because all these movies have to be their biggest battle yet, and, and all that stuff, like, I've seen so many biggest battles that I don't know if this one's gonna live up to it for me, because they're all about huge, and the thing is, I I know people really loved Civil War, and it's the same directors of Civil War and uh, and and Winter Soldier too. But the thing is, those are personal, and this doesn't feel personal to me. It's, yeah. it's more like let's get as many heroes together because we need to fight the baddest guy in this part of the universe. But we know that I mean, you know? some of them might die. I'm hoping. Maybe. I'm hoping they kill off at least two or three characters. Yeah. You're hoping for this. I'm hoping they do because I'm like, have some fucking balls. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. You want to prove that? Th like in part one, they gotta kill off someone. Yeah. They gotta kill off someone. In part two, they gotta kill off at least one more person. I'm hoping they do that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we all have end of the world fatigue. Yeah, when it comes to like fucking of. these these Marvel movies, it's just because we, we don't believe it. We just don't believe they'll actually ever lose or something. Even because like, we know how the machines work too. It's like the, these movies are all contracted out, so it's like you know that because everything's a franchise now, certain things have to be safe, and we have to keep this thing going. Yeah. These movies keep getting huger and huger with their action pieces. Huge. Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> and after a while, it's like the stuff that's worked for me recently, like. The reason I like Deadpool so much, or, or certain other things, or even Guardians of the Galaxy, was because at the end of the day, it was more about, it was more of a personal conflict, you know, it was yeah. conflicts related to the characters themselves, and it seems like if cramming so many characters in, like, I know they'll juggle them well enough, I'm not saying I don't think it'll be good for what it is, but just a mega battle, I'm not really that excited about, especially having just seen Doctor Strange, where it was like, all of space-time and everything might just rip apart right now, like. But we know. can reverse it. 
Yeah, we can reverse <laughs> it. One thing I brought with John, then we'll move on. One thing I brought with John was like, well, I kind of view it like the last Harry Potter movie, the last Lord of the Rings movie, is that this is supposed to be like the big, you know, where it's all about spectacle and celebrating the heroes uniting and fighting the big bad guy and taking him down. But he did bring up a good point. Thanos isn't as anticipated or built up in the movies. Maybe if you're a comic book lover, you're really enthused for Thanos. But in the movies, like, look at it like Harry Potter. Like, you build up Voldemort for all these fucking movies. And then you're like, all right, this is the final battle. This is the battle's gonna go down. Finally, Harry and Voldemort are gonna burst each other. Yeah, you know? yeah. And like, I don't really feel that vibe. For a person who's not that big into the comics, doesn't really know much about Thanos, I'm not really that excited about Thanos. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm more like wondering, like, what is the big deal about him now? I'm just I, like, I feel like a lot of the stuff we've seen is I, I just wish in hindsight and, that they'd made some of these like stings and, and little illusions a bit more interesting or sinister because pretty much every time I remember seeing Thanos it's just some subject coming up to him like hey the plan that we just did in this movie that everybody just saw didn't work. Just so Thanos like, constantly uh, going in like, maybe I should just do it. I'm no! Maybe, yeah. won't. <laughs> and the other thing that you brought up too, which is a good point, is that like, those were the final Harry Potter film, the final Lord of the Rings film. Like, we know that a yeah, large this... amount of this is going to still keep going. They got more films slated after yeah. Infinity War. So, this isn't like the big, bang, glorious hurrah. The reason why we still put this on this list is I am genuinely looking forward to watching it. I, I do just want to see, like, all, I think it's cool when you see all these characters on the same screen. Even if the film is not that great, I'm still like, it's cool to see them all. We looked at all the movies that we didn't include on this list, and Avengers Infinity War was the one we were like, we're like, we need a number 10. 10 slot, why don't we look at what is the film that we're definitely going to watch? Yeah. And we're like, well, we're all, we're definitely gonna watch Infinity War regardless. <laughs> so uh, we put that on this list. But yeah. the other films we have a much more genuine enthusiasm about. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not not excited for, for Infinity War. It's something I'm very familiar with. And some of these other ones are not. Yeah, we're not gonna spend as much time on the other ones. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Dose. Yeah. The first Guardians of the Galaxy was a very exciting film. A yeah, lot of fun, yeah. totally fresh flair, different vibe, and something that we needed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And yeah, a shot yeah. of sci-fi and that space opera vibe. And it's not about, like, even though you got Thanos in there, even though you got Infinity Stones, it's, it's done in a way where you don't feel like they're just trying to reference other Marvel movies or the other Marvel worlds. And I, It's I nice when they're free to go off and be a little more in their own universe. Yeah, they, and they were. They were, yeah. which was great. You know, they're not on Earth, so <laughs> yeah. it was great. And Guardians of the Galaxy 2, what I really like about it, all these actors seem so excited to be a part of it. Especially Vin Diesel is Groot. He's just like yeah. the most outspoken <laughs> guy about how excited he is to be a part of it. Really threw himself into these movies. And um, James Gunn, I love that he went out of his way to say like, hey, I know I didn't do a great job with the villain in the first one. For him to acknowledge that is saying like he's probably gonna go out of his way to make sure he gives us a great villain in the second one. Yeah. Kurt Russell thrown into the mix. Oh, is, dude, is like yeah. that's Kurt just Russell. like yeah, <laughs> I'm totally on board for that. I imagine he'll be a scene stealer. I think Kurt Russell is one of the best actors of all time. That's the primary reason I'm sold on it. And the fact that James Gunn's doing it again. James Gunn's never done a movie like this. Not on the scale, anyway. And, and it's not an automatic reassurance that if a director is returning, that it's going to be great. Yeah. Age of Ultron or Spider-Man 3. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean, like, oh, it's going to be a damn good movie for sure. I do feel that James Gunn, like, he is one of those, like, comic book kind of nerdy directors who I feel really... Yeah. Yeah. does love Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know, the teaser trailer just got me excited again. It just seems like a great continuation. It doesn't feel like it's just trying to lead up to Infinity War. <laughs> I, I get a little bit more of like, oh, it's just the next in an ongoing series of adventures from, from Guardians, yeah. more so than it's like, oh, the stakes! Like, it's the world might end tonight. Like, that franchise feels more like a comic book to me, because I'm just like, what's gonna happen in the next issue? Our number eight is Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm excited for this film. I really did like Tom Holland's portrayal in Captain America Civil War. John, even though you didn't see it, I didn't want to mention that in this video so the world doesn't hate you, but I'm mentioning it anyway. But but you know everyone loves him in it. I'm excited for this because, yeah, I think Spider-Man is that character who does need to be a part of the MCU. I really liked Sam Raimi's first couple Spider-Man movies. I even liked Andrew Garfield in The Amazing Spider-Man 1. I actually enjoyed The Amazing Spider-Man 1 overall. I don't really think this is about, like, Sony just fucks up their movies. I think that is one of those things, too. <laughs> but I think that Spider-Man is that character beyond the X-Men, beyond Fantastic Four, who I'm like, which one does need to be in the Marvel properties in the films? And it's yeah. Spider-Man for me. So I'm excited that he's included. He fits perfectly in with 
the comic book characters they've chosen to bring to life, the world they've chosen to bring to the films. I just have a lot of faith that Marvel will probably nail this one correctly. I think so too, and I'm I'm excited to see. Uh, I'm excited to I'm see Spidey. Sp I'm Spider Man. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see Spider Man return. I mean, Spider Man was always my favorite growing up. Now that we're into our third live action franchise, I'm. A little just being cautious because I'm like are they gonna recapture that magic but you know from all I've heard and seen about Tom Holland he seems like a good choice well, and John Watts is an odd choice for directors I am excited I feel like it's in really good hands with Marvel so I definitely want to check it out what I like too that they said they're doing that they made clear from the beginning is they're not gonna be making it a an origin story he's already spider-man just yeah. like how he is in, in, in Civil War it's picking up after the events of Civil War you're gonna see who Peter Parker is at this time and, and I think Tom Holland is perfectly cast the dude looks 15. I feel like he's gonna look 15 for like the rest of his life. Just look at the guy. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that thing that the first Spider-Man did or Amazing Spider-Man said they were gonna do, but by part two, they're like, we gotta get him out of high school. He doesn't look young enough. I feel like we're not gonna run into that problem with this franchise. And so it is gonna be cool because Mark Webb said it with Amazing Spider-Man. John Watts has been saying it about this film is that some of the most interesting points in Peter Parker's life are his time in high school. I feel like we're actually going to be able to explore that this time. So I'm hoping yeah. this is a great launching period for this. John, you want to introduce number seven? Yeah, coming in at number seven, Aquaman, James Wan's Aquaman. I'm just excited for that reason, man. I'm, I'm just excited that it's Light James Lights in my light. Yeah, <laughs> my son and stars. Uh, <laughs> James Wan is one of those filmmakers where at least right now, like, I, I kind of feel like he knows how to do it. Even the weird earthquake city that seems like it's DC's movies right now, I feel like he can make something solid. At least the footage of Aquaman from the Justice League trailer looked cool to me. Like, just their take on the character looked cool. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm glad Aquaman is coming to the big screen, actually. Like, that's a character that's been shit on a lot of over so much time, and I always thought he was cool, so. I'm really, yeah, the main reason I want to see it is for James Wan directing the film. I feel like most of his films are pretty damn good. Even if you don't like some of them, I think most are very, very good, He's especially huge. in the genre they're in. And with Furious 7, he proved he can do these big blockbuster films and make them work and add a little something extra as well. Yeah, it seems like he's good at taking whatever he's given and making sure it's executed well and also giving it some some personality. He, yeah. he always seems like he knows just what he's doing. And Jason Momoa, first thing I saw him in was the Conan remake, which I did not like. I actually yeah. turned that off. I was like, I just can't sit through this. <laughs> I don't yeah. like it at all. And I didn't like him either. I just finished season two of Game of Thrones. I finally started watching the show. I thought he was great in it. Is yeah. Drogo? I thought he was fantastic. So it got me excited. Like, oh, I'm really excited. This guy's gonna be Aquaman now. It seems like he's gonna have that you know, he's obviously not a pretty boy, blonde hair, blue eye, Aquaman, orange looking shirt. He's still <laughs> sexy. Yeah, yeah, he's still sexy and buff, but he has more of that like Valkyrie kind of look about yeah. him. I think that will work as an Aquaman for the universe DC is trying to establish. Yeah, he, he does look kind of on the right level for what they're doing. And hey, I saw that video on the internet of Jason Momoa like throwing an axe from across the room, yeah. like hitting a target, and then drinking a beer, and I was like, yeah, I'll watch, I'll watch. Yeah, he's like a <laughs> savage personality. Yeah. Dude seems like a super, like, yeah, like the guy who should be playing a superhero. <laughs> Number six okay. we have on the list is Wonder Woman. Yeah. I've been liking the footage we've been seeing from Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. I know DC hasn't been having the greatest reputation. But they I know always was, make a good trailer. And there was that letter released from that Warner Brothers employee who's like, don't even get me started on what we heard about Wonder Woman. I still feel like from watching the trailer, there's going to be plenty to still admire about the film. I don't feel yeah. like it'll be a bland, void of life kind of movie. You know, like how some people perceive Batman v Superman. <laughs> I feel like, because Batman v Superman, like you can argue like there's a cool fight scene. There's some cool visuals, but you don't really walk away thinking about it. Well, I feel like, you know, you got some great production design in there. Like, yeah. a lot of the costumes look great. It's a period piece, so I feel like there's going to be plenty to admire just in total production design. See, I think that's cool. And I, wishfully, I hope they kind of keep the Wonder Woman movies, period, for a while. That's what I missed with the Captain America. Like, I, I thought it was so cool to go back. No, man, we got to get Wonder Woman in Justice League. I like that it's a period piece. I'm excited for that, and I'm excited, you know, it's... It's about time we had a movie about a female superhero and it's Wonder Woman is, is arguably like the yeah. female superhero. And, and so like, let's do it. Yeah. Chris Pine and Steve Trevor looks like he's going to be pretty fucking funny. Yeah. And the action does look really cool. It looks like there's some really, really cool action sequences in there. Yeah, I'm a little worried about how the film's going to be told. I'm a little worried about little, the story and all yeah. that shit because of what we've seen from previous DC films. I'm going in with an open mind and I still feel like, like I, we put this, you know, number six because... 
I still feel like there's going to be enough to walk away from to be like, this stuff was definitely good, though. Yeah, This yeah, stuff yeah. was still, like, you can't argue that this stuff was cool. I like the people involved. I like the idea. And I, don't yeah. I like that they're going out with the genre. Female you know? superhero lead, female director. Yeah. It's really cool. Ladies can have females. fun with too. I love know? females. Yeah. And black people. Right? Yeah. You say those sure. two. Everyone Love respects everybody, you. man. Everyone respects Everyone you. Everyone respects you. And when the you gays. Say it like that. I like Make the sure gays. you say it just the way you're saying it. I like it now. females, blacks, and gays. <laughs> <laughs> That's everyone, right? That's everyone. That encompasses then I'm then I am the most awesome, humble human being in the world. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you're very conscious of the people around. Can we change number five for Deadpool too? Or are you really excited for Green Lantern Corps? Uh I'm more I, interested in Green Lantern Corps, but Really? Than Deadpool too? Well, because I already know Deadpool 2, and Green Lantern Corps seems like it's interesting to me. Like, Green Lantern Corps is like, ah, this could... Because, like, that could take their universe out in an odd direction. You know, they fucked it up the first time, so I'm like, now they've got Green Lantern Corps. It's not just one guy. It's, like, a couple guys. It's a new universe. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, that all, that all sounds great. I'm just... Not that excited? Well, I just feel like DC... The Green Lantern was supposed to be the original start of the DCEU. Mm hmm and they fucked that up, and DCEU hasn't exactly been that great. So for them to be like, we'll be doing Green Lantern Corps, I'm just like, you yeah, haven't even proven yourself in other movies that you can redo Green Lantern right this time. That's a very fair argument. And it's Deadpool 2, I'm like, it just that sounds really cool. <laughs> Deadpool 2, yeah, too. Right, I agree. We'll just keep this whole part of the video. I don't disagree. We'll change you at number five for Deadpool 2. <laughs> yeah, Deadpool 2. I mean, how can you not be excited for it other than the fact that they're having director issues and all that? But they got one of the directors from John Wick to come on board. And the one thing I, I feel about Deadpool that could be improved yeah. was the action sequences. I'm like, I like that Ryan Reynolds was like, I don't want to make it go huge. I don't want to make it go crazy. I don't want to, like, I know that's part of the charm is keeping it like, a little smaller. John Wick is not a huge film. Yeah. You know, it's it was made for totally $40 totally. million dollars or something. And well, it's, it's made... super stylistic in its action and it's beautifully shot. You know, because we're going to want, like, give us more humor. Give us all breaking the fourth wall, whatever that shit is. I feel like the one thing they could do is give us cooler action sequences. Yeah, I mean, it seems like he has the, the tool to kind of fill in what you might have been missing from Deadpool. Because Deadpool, Deadpool does... At least to me, when I think about it, it feels kind of like a little movie. Yeah, it is. In a way. Like, it's still, you know, a superhero movie and it's so crazy, but it doesn't seem overly huge. And John Wick does seem huge, even though he only goes a few places. Yeah, some guy who can make this feel sufficiently big without it having to be so, yeah. like, huge. Is Yeah, I'm excited to see what he does with it. I'm, I'm curious as to how this guy does humor and now. I, th I think it would be cool to see Deadpool use more gun. He mainly used, like, his blades and uh, his swords in the first movie. So I think it would be cool to just, like... Let's see some of that John Wick kind of gun action yeah. and with Deadpool like that and like make it even more surreal, make it more yeah. more crazy because you're not dealing with a just a human being right now, you know? If a John Wick director met and discussed with the powers that be and they're like, yeah, let's go with this guy. The first one was good enough that I trust that that's probably going to work out, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm a little concerned for their, for their you know, conflict with the second one, but I have no reason yet to be like, oh, it's trouble. Number four Number is four. Black Panther. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman is really cool in Captain America Civil War. I know they got Ryan Coogler. They got a, like a huge black cast in this film. Like I said, man, females and blacks. Where's our gay superhero now? <laughs> black Panther was a really cool character. They, you know, one thing that Civil War did really well with that film was they introduced Black Panther and they managed to still make him shine in a, in a movie where a lot of characters have to shine. Yeah. And it gets you excited for Black Panther because he's more of a serious kind of character and I imagine this is going to be more of a serious kind of Marvel movie, oh, which yeah. I'm okay with. A lot of these Marvel films are jam-packed with humor and I feel like this one will have much more serious well, vibes. So you got humor. Ryan Coogler who did like Creed and Fruitvale Station. He's proven himself to be an awesome director hasn't tackled something this big before, feel like he'll know what to do with the material. I trust in the filmmakers, I trust in the cast, I trust in Marvel. I, I feel like this will be a, a really great addition and something different and more risky to put out there. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this movie and I'm excited that this is happening. Because it seems like we're living in a time now where more, you know, diverse shows and movies are coming. It's about diversity, to man. I'm excited to see that this is the, the biggest stage we have right now in, in, you know, North American cinema. I'm excited just for what this movie is, but also, you know, everything I've seen of Black Panther, he just looks fucking awesome. 
you know, and I'm ready for superhero movies to become more than just cool. And it seems like, you know, a Black Panther movie is a good way to kind of address some things and to at least make some allegories while we're having fun. Number three is Justice League Dark. Justice League Dark. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know much about the Justice League Dark characters, but it does sound like an intriguing kind of world for me because they deal more with like magic in that world. One thing that is really intriguing to me is they got Doug Lyman to do it. Yeah. And Doug Lyman, he's, you know, if I was on movie fights, I'd be like, Doug Lyman did Jumper and that wasn't that great. Other than that. He <laughs> also did Edge of Tomorrow. He did Edge of Tomorrow, which is awesome. He launched the Bourne franchise. Dude. Granted, it's not the best one out of them, but it still is the one that launched it. And he's done some other like really enjoyable films. Mr. Mrs. Smith, I think, is a totally yeah, great time. Movie, you know? yeah. And Edge of Tomorrow was my favorite movie that year it came out. That was that that's to me is one of Tom Cruise's best films. Yeah. And Doug Lyman's best film to me is Edge of Tomorrow. So he's shown that like whatever you thought of Jumper, if you thought it was just okay or whatever. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow is, is another huge spectacle film that he mm -hmm. totally nailed and got it down just right. And that is also a comic book adaptation. So I feel like Justice League Dark dealing with a bunch of weird kind of shit and then superheroes. I feel like, like this, horror elements and stuff. And I feel like Doug Lyman knows how to cast his movies well. Yeah. I feel like he really knows what actors to hire for roles. I feel like he'll, he'll probably put together a really entertaining film. Because regardless of his films lack in certain awesome depth sometimes, I feel like he knows how to make a really entertaining film. Well, and this is a movie that, that excites me because A, it's a little further out in, in DC's slate and I feel like by this time they can probably, you know, sort out whatever kinks still remain, I, I hope. I read a, a, a blurb just somewhere where Doug Lyman was interviewed and he said like, they asked me to get weirder and, and more Doug Lyman-y on this movie. Nice. And I was just like, yeah, awesome. Like, I, I like a little to lime to the lime in it, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> a little lime zest on this, a little lime and zest. <laughs> so uh, that's the DC producers just talking. It's like, I get it, guys. <laughs> lime, I get lime. it. <laughs> I can get you lime. Yeah, I'm excited for this. This sounds like cool and out there and, and you know, just a little, a little different from the stuff we usually see. Number dose is Thor Ragnarok. Uh, how can you not be excited for this after seeing that promo vid they released? <laughs> yeah, Thor Ragnarok is... This is probably the most excited I've been about a Thor movie. I think it's the most excited anyone's been. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the big anticipations of it is that they are, like, the Hulk will be featured a lot in it. Which I think is cool. I feel like Thor and Hulk, if you're gonna take one of the Marvel characters and throw them in a, in, in a Thor movie, it is gonna be Hulk that would make it for the most interesting kind of film. They're on a level where they could be an odd couple of sorts. Yeah, they, they definitely, definitely. Chris Hemsworth, I, I really enjoyed it. And, and this director, you know, John, show me what Taika we do in the shadows. Yeah. He seems like a, a fantastic director who will know how to provide personality and humor and provide weirdness to this. Yeah, I don't he's... know much about who Ragnarok is. I don't know much about what the actual plot developments are. All I know is the people involved getting Hulk in there that sounds like it's gonna be one hell of a worthwhile time and people are very excited for it and I actually can't wait to see a trailer for this movie. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I'm always a little concerned when they when they pluck these guys who are great at making indie films out to make a giant movie like this. But that, that sketch that you showed me, that made me laugh a lot of times and it seemed like they were having fun with it and embracing some of Taika Waititi's sensibilities. And from looking back at just, I've, I've looked over his filmography and like pretty much everything he's done is, has been met with great Praise. Yeah. This seems like another guy who just knows how to make a movie, and so I'm really excited for what he brings to this, and this seems like an interesting choice and a fresh direction, and I don't know how much of that comedy will be, you know, in the DNA of the movie. I think it will. But I think it will. Something yeah. tells me that, that they will embrace that. You know, having Hulk in it, I really like... Uh, uh, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, Tired Guys Hulk. I've seen the logo, and the logo with that, like, weird 80s shutter yeah. effect. I'm like, I bet they're... It seems like they're having fun with I feel Thor. like they're doing their best to make this one distinct. Because the other two Thor movies... Logan. Logan, Logan I, I'm i really surprised that the, like, this is technically an X-Men film in its own way. It just looks the most different, yet the most appealing. Yeah, you know? totally. Like, it's like, whoa, this is drastically taking a dark, gloomy turn, but it's also like an awesome western, and it, it looks gritty, and I love that they're going with the R rating. What I was hearing the director talk about, I was hearing Hugh Jackman talk about, then seeing the photo stills, I was like, this looks like going to be a cool movie. Yeah. And then I saw the trailer, and I'm like, I, I'm 
this is easily the most anticipated film out of any comic book movie I've yeah, heard of totally. so far. It just looks grounded, looks personal, looks like it's going to be a great send-off for Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. It's risky. Like, you just, I don't think, I don't think if X-Men was part of the MCU, you would get Logan. Yeah. You know? That's, and I love when they do this kind of stuff. It seems like it really is about Logan, and it seems yeah. like... Most everything will tie into him. This will be a. It seems like a personal movie. Yeah. Not just like oh, there's a villain, but it seems like a really personal movie that's going all in yeah. on this really sparse, hot, you know, desolate western style. And I think that's really cool. It feels more like a film than a than just you yeah. know a comic book movie. And for them to like go into the future while you're also continuing with the cast of people from like X Men Apocalypse and shit yeah. with their films, yeah. when you're like, well, here's what the, where the future's headed. Though, yeah. where a lot of the mutants are dying out and there's barely anyone left. It's such a risky type of thing for a film to do, not for a comic book to do, but the comic book is also very much beloved. And I hear they're doing their best to really honor the Old Man Logan comic. That, and that's the stuff I'm curious about for this movie because there are a couple money shots that's what i want to know is how much of that sort of money shot stuff seeps in because as i understand it old man logan there's a lot about the stigma of his claws you know yeah. and, and the and also just the, the sheer pain of it you know now that his regeneration is gone you know, so, it, it kind of looks like a, an interesting like western character study apocalyptic yeah. It, yeah it just looks so different and i i, I love it I, I love everything i've seen so yeah, far i'm totally. really hoping it delivers this feels <laughs> like a very a, a fantastic fitting send off yeah. if they can nail it yeah know? exactly i hope he dies i do i hope he actually dies in this one yeah give the boy some peace let him rest and miss you all right guys well we didn't include justice league the flash valerian in the city of a thousand planets captain marvel gambit and green lantern core i'm sure some of you are gonna comment <laughs> and be like where's this movie on the list flash is on its like 10th director like i don't know yeah <laughs> And Zack Snyder hasn't exactly proven himself. Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. Luke Besson is very hit and miss. We honestly don't know much about Captain Marvel. I'm Gambit. just excited that it's happening. Gambit just lost its director to Justice League Dark. Yeah. And Green Lantern Core, you heard our explanation as yeah. to why we uh, bumped that off the list. So. And I know there's probably some other films like animated movies and shit coming out. But, yeah, those are our top ten. What are your top ten? What are you looking forward to? It's a good YouTube question. Keeps me interactive. What are your top 10? All right, females, blacks, and gays. If you're new to the channel, you can subscribe today. John is Reason Jerry on Instagram and Twitter. And he is also the social media manager of Facebook.com slash Bloomhouse and Facebook.com slash The Real Rejects. And um, I want to give a shout out to Jared Leto. I don't know what's happening with your career right now as the Joker, my friend. They released like footage. This one guy put together a supercut of like behind the scenes footage that they released of the movie. Oh no. And like other <laughs> excerpts from the trailer showing like why weren't any of these things included in the extended cut? Uh -huh. Showing the Joker clearly had a lot more scenes. I just feel like Warner Brothers is just trying to make us forget about Jared Leto right now so they can just Guys. fire him one day. Guys, come on. <laughs> Let's put this shit back in the movie. <laughs>